What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome to the Palo Duro Canyon in Northern Texas. It was absolutely amazing, beautiful. I love this place and I can't wait to go back. I want to stay in the canyon next year. I want to ride the trails more. Like this trail, I haven't been able to get out of my mind. It was so much fun. It was so hard. It was just enough technical that it made it difficult for me. But uh, this is where our USA Cycling Mountain Bike Marathon National Event was held this year. It will also be held in 2020. Uh, you're seeing me line up on the start line here for my age group. There were actually two other groups that lined up at the same time as me. It was the uh, 17 to 19 year old, the 17 and 18 year old women. And then I think like the 60 plus men so it kind of made it a little bit more confusing, but as you can see, they tried to mark our legs with our group. So to try to, you know, help us identify us out on the trail. Anyways, yeah, this is my first nationals event. So I really did not know what to expect, but this starting here, we are going to go up the road and to try to help spread us out a little bit before we we dump down on the trail so this is that start right here as you can see i'm towards the front of the pack which is pretty much what my goal was there's a total of seven other girls in my age group so my goal was really to just try to stick on the back of them because honestly coming into this i had a big question mark on my fitness level compared to them because most of the girls it seemed had done these national level events in the past so i felt like they had a much better understanding of this than i did as you can see over on the left there's a couple of those men coming up around us and we're going decently fast here but i mean we're not really hammering it so i'm kind of you know just trying to think like well i don't want to do more effort than i need to if all the men are going to go to the front you know I, i'm just trying to think i want to stick with that group of ladies right here i'm actually kind of getting boxed in a little bit and i kind of see around that uh, a gap has started to form and so i'm trying to figure out you know the best course of action to get up there to that gap and that's that's kind of why i'm kind of just hanging in and opens up on the right side so I put in a little bit of effort because I want to bridge up to that group because that's where all the girls in my group are have they're all of them are up there now so it's not really too big of an effort to catch on uh, this road is it honestly it was extremely fast some of it was downhill a little bit of it was uphill but I'm able to catch on pretty easy and just kind of float onto the back of them and uh, the girl over on the left I know I actually raced her before her name is Kaylee and so I kind of have an idea of, it was, it was actually about two years ago when I raced her. So I, I kind of know her as a rider a little bit. So I wasn't really looking for her wheel, but I knew I wanted to try to be as close to her as possible. So we're on a, a little bit of a climb here and you can see some of the guys coming back up, some of the position changing, but I'm just wanting to kind of stay where I'm at. You know, like I said, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's fast forward because not too much changes on the trail right here. In my previous video, I talked about how much it rained. I actually didn't get to do all of my pre-riding I wanted to do because the course was too wet. They actually had to delay the race by like three hours. I didn't start my race until three hours and what I was originally supposed to. So at this point, the course is, it's, it's pretty wet. Um, as you can see, like the tires, the dirt is kind of sticking to the tires. So first big corner right here, it's just sloppy wet and I am down on the ground. Yeah down on the ground that early in the race as you can see i just i just like i didn't know what happened we were going through there so fast i was really confused about why i went down and nobody else did until i looked at the footage i was really just kind of over to the right just a little bit more than the girl in front of me so i got off into a little bit of the wetter section that she avoided and like it's so stupid like i think the only reason that happened was just because you know the adrenaline's pumping i'm trying to stay on the back trying to keep intact with that group and you know not paying super close attention to the line that i'm taking and that that's literally all that it took 
for me to go down. And I mean, that was a pretty a time consuming crash. My bars were kind of twisted, had to get my bike repositioned, had to wait for these two people to come around before I was able to get back on and get pedaling. And, you know, not only do you lose all that time, but you're kind of already, you know, like now you're, you're rushing basically. So at this point, I'm just wanting to catch back on to that group that I wanted to be on the back of. I'm like, man, I just, that's where I wanted to be. And I'm already kind of being held up right here. So yeah, I mean, I'm already thinking in my head, wow, <laughs> race over, race is already over. You know, that was, that was, that was it. That was it right there. Just crashing that soon at, you know, they were full on race pace at that point. I actually read on one of the girls, the girl who won her Strava post that she was doing XC pace for the first one and a half hours of the race. So even though this was a marathon race, the pace was extremely high, much higher than honestly I would have expected. So yeah, I'm already at this point, I'm just chasing. I'm just thinking, man, I want to catch back up to the group. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward here a little bit. Basically, we are going to cross back to the finish line and go through the finish line in this early part of the race here. And I passed this girl right on the finish line and I couldn't see how her leg was marked because she had the long socks on and I just assumed that she was in my age group. So <laughs> the very first, you know, less than three miles into the race, I've already crashed and I'm, or I already think that I've passed somebody in my group. I later find out she was not in my age group, which it really didn't matter. It didn't make any, any difference to where I placed on the podium. It didn't help me get on the podium. So it doesn't really matter. Anyways, this part of the trail is the Upper Comanche Trail. And there's a couple of sections that they're not really, they're, they're a little bit technical and they're a little bit, you know, if you're, if you're not expecting them, they're like punchy climbs. So if you're not expecting them to be there, they really kind of take you by surprise. So I was, I had ridden this in the pre-ride and I was prepared for those sections. But a lot of times when you get into a race, as some of you may know, there becomes a bottleneck and you can't ride those anyways. That definitely happened. I don't know if that made any difference of time for me because I assume the other girls kind of, were kind of in the same boat anyways. But basically what ended up happening is that I caught up to two of the girls in my age group, which at, the, at that time they would have been sixth and seventh place. I was in last place. And I caught up to them and on the climbs, like I could tell my pace was better than theirs, but somehow I still got dropped. I'm pretty sure that they passed a rider that I didn't pass right away. And because I had been chasing, I sat there for a little bit too long and I just, you know, they just kind of went on, not like they just put the hammer down and dropped me, but they just gradually had a higher pace than me. This next section of trail is some of the flat trail. So we don't do the lower Comanche on the first lap. We actually go right. And this is a really fast, flat section. And I was just really trying to keep a really steady pace, the, you know, to kind of try to make up some time here. And that may have hurt me in the long run. As you can see, these sections are still really wet. So honestly, I chased the whole first lap. The whole first lap, I was just trying to catch somebody. <laughs> I, I just wanted to catch anybody else in my age group, to be honest. And what ended up happening is the girl that I knew actually had a crash and hurt her leg. And so I did pass her. And pretty much before I had, I had caught up to her, I'd kind of already given up on myself. Like, I just... I, I had so many emotions back and forth during this race. Basically, I kept catching girls that weren't in my age group and it was really like demotivating when I would actually catch them and be like, oh gosh, you know, I, I didn't gain any places. Like I'd see them in the distance and I would work to get to them, I'd get to them and then it's like, oh, well, you know, well, man, that's that didn't help me at all. But when I passed her, it kind of got me back into the racing mentality. I was kind of getting a little bit behind on my hydration and nutrition. So I started to, it started to help me get back on track. Unfortunately, at the start of the second lap, I was already starting to feel the pains of that first lap. So I'm already over 20 miles in at this point. 
we do that upper Comanche trail again, but instead of turning right to these flat lands, we actually turn left and go to the lower Comanche, which I, I had planned to pre-ride that, but because of the rain, I actually wasn't even able to. So I didn't know what to expect, but I knew that it was some sort of climb. Being that I'm already hurting, I get through that upper Comanche, I get to the lower Comanche, my GoPro has died at this point. It's not that the battery died, it's just that it decided to completely stop turning on. It's almost like the battery just went dead. So I'm just going to show you guys the footage that I do have here and just go ahead and recap the rest of the race for you. When I got to that lower Comanche, the, the climb was much punchier and technical than what I expected. And honestly, I was not prepared for that. My fitness was not good for those kind of climbs. And because it had been wet, some of the, the dirt had actually been picked up by tires and moved like onto some of the rocks. And so they were a little bit slicker. I mean, it was just punchy climb and then you might coast for a bit or come down and then it was punchy climb. So it was kind of like attack after attack after attack, but in the form of small punchy climbs. And then the descent was pretty technical. There were a couple of places that I had to get off and because of the mud, I was actually getting a lot of mud in my cleats when I was having to get off because I had to push a couple of those climbs and it was causing issues when I was trying to clip back in. And so there, were, there was a time where I had clipped in, but it wasn't actually in all the way. So when I got to a climb and I pulled up, it, my foot just came out and I basically, because I was going slow, I actually fell over on some rocks and, you know, got a couple of bruises. It's mountain bike race. What, what can you expect really, you know? By the time I got off that lower Comanche, I was, I was done. I was ready to, I was ready to stop riding. I mean, I was trashed and I was bonked, cramping. It's so odd to me because my toes and my feet and my calves, everything basically from my calves down were starting to randomly cramp. And I just thought that was really odd. My hydration leading up to the race was really good. Even though I kind of slacked off a little bit for that first hour, I felt like I was still really hydrated overall. So I know there's a lot more that goes into cramps than hydration, but what I'm going to get at now in this commentary are a couple of the things that I've learned from this race that I want to work on going forward. I finished seventh out of eight. So I technically finished last because the eighth place person was actually a DNF, the girl who crashed. The main reason why I placed last essentially is honestly my fitness level was not where it needed to be for this event and I honestly I had a feeling of that probably a month or so going into it and the reason why I say that is because I just felt like when I you know I, I followed a trainer road plan when I started that specialty phase I stopped following the plan as exclusively and started doing my own rides outdoors and I just wasn't building my fitness up from where I should be and I felt like I actually lost some fitness. Even if I came in at that fitness level before I think it started dropping, I still wouldn't have been ready. I just, honestly, I compare a lot of things to my fitness for Leadville last year and I just did not have that fitness for this race. I just needed more I needed need more training hours, to be honest. More intense, longer trainer training hours. I mean, that's all there is to it. My fitness needed to be higher. That's the number one thing. And that's something that I know, and I, you know, I know where my fitness is now, so that's something that I can easily target and focus on for next year. Uh, the second thing is that I did not know there were gonna be so many short, punchy climbs. So again, something else that I can easily train and focus on. And then the foot cramping thing is something that has happened to me before this is probably one of the worst time like the most that's ever happened the worst that's ever happened and I've talked to Frank about this my teammate a couple times and the best thing that we can figure out is that when I'm doing these climbs I'm actually kind of like trying to like grab with my toes a little bit as I'm climbing like and that's causing a bunch of stress on all those muscles that that's pulling on and just doing that over and over and obviously over time is causing all that stuff to cramp. 
So basically, what I need to focus on is actually relaxing my foot while I'm climbing. So anyways, I mean, that's really it for my, my uh, first nationals race, mountain bike marathon nationals. I learned so much from this race. I love the trail and I'm really looking forward to going back and trying to do a lot better. Something that I knew would be an issue for me is targeting a race so early in the season because typically I do a lot of training through May, June, and July, and I just didn't put the same effort into the past three months as I would have if this race were later in the season. So that's something that I definitely need to focus on and target for next year. But other than that, I mean, it was a really cool event. You know, hopefully it would have been nice if the weather was a little bit better, but you know, we can't control the weather. So really that's it guys. I mean, I just wanted to kind of show you guys the footage that I did have from the race and give you an idea of how my race broke down. I mean, that whole second lap, I was pretty much bonked and cramped. And honestly, I was just proud of myself to finish the race. I felt good just finishing because it was such a hard day. And like I said, this gives me goals and things to focus on in the future. So that's gonna be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on the next one. And I'm gonna let you know what my training is gonna be like in the future. Thanks guys.